Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. <sighs> I don't know, when I wear yellow, it just puts me in like this mood. Yes. Like, I don't know what it is about yellow. Thank you, Willie Sinclair III from the Milwaukee Sinclair. Yes. So, good morning, hey, John. Hello, Sherry Shepard, how are you? Oh, man, I am uh, great. I just found out, like, literally uh, 20 minutes ago that it is National Sun's oh. Day. Oh. Yes, today is National Sun's oh, Day. I, I tried to call you last night and you said, I'm sorry, I'm wore out. I just got in from the parent teacher meeting. Yes, I had to, yeah, so this is my National Sun's Day story. I went, I had to go to like a back to school night for Jeffrey, my son. And so Jeffrey, let, Jeffrey is, uh, he has Asperger's, but it's all now, it's all known as like uh, on the spectrum, on the autism spectrum. So he now goes to a school. It's called a transition school because the Department of Education of New York feels like if you have a disability, just because you turn 18 and graduate does not mean you know how to navigate life. So they have transition schools which teach you more about, you know, life skills and how to, it within, within, you know, what you're challenged with, how to live life independently. So I love the school that he goes to. So it's still like a high school. So I went there and I forgot that I had it and I just had to find some hair to put on. You know how you just, you... <laughs> and I don't have any, you know, Theo has not made me wigs that I can wear out. So I had this one little short red wig. <laughs> Please, y'all, do not, do not judge me. I know I look like an auntie with the point right here. <laughs> that's all, that's all I had. I had to throw it on and I went to the school. Now, now, kids that are on the spectrum and like Jeffrey, there's no filter. Jeffrey has no filter. If you ask him what's going on, he will tell you. He don't, he, there's no like, oh, that's not offensive or that's not, it's nothing. So I went with this wig and the kids were like, what's wrong with your hair? <laughs> And I was just like, there's nothing wrong. And one child said, did you clean it? And this, <laughs> but what it was, he meant to, he didn't know, like dye it. That's what he meant. Because he said, it's a different color because they're so used to me wearing this long hair. It's a different color. And just to have to smile through that, I'm like, y'all just hurting my feelings, but you don't even know. <laughs> and Jeffrey's like, yeah, 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 I tell you, he's wearing these wigs. And I'm like, Jeffrey. <laughs> so we're going on and the, um, the, the administrator is like giving out gifts and everything. And she says, now I'm gonna say to the parents, if you can answer these questions about your child, you're gonna get a gift. And she said, what's your child's favorite subject? And everybody raised their hand and I was like, I don't even know what this boy's uh, <laughs> favorite subject is. Cause Jeffrey doesn't talk to me when he gets home. He doesn't want to talk. And so uh, they kept get winning all of these prizes. And then they said, what is the school's theme? And I said, I, I don't even know what the name of the school is. <laughs> I, so Jeffrey is looking at me like, are you gonna answer a question? <laughs> Every parent had won a gift for answering the question. They've won prizes. And then they finally said, what is the elective your child chose? And Jeffrey looked at me and I go, you got an elective? <laughs> And he's looking at me, so he raised his hand and they gave the gift to Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeffrey, I am so, like, I just, and I'm like, Jeffrey, I just had COVID. I didn't even know about this thing. And he gives me the gift, he goes, here, I won this for you. <laughs> So, but we, but we made it through, and Jeffrey, I'm so proud of you. I still don't know what your elective is, but uh, happy Sons Day, Jeffrey. <laughs> oh my God! And speaking of sons, Jenny McCarthy was here yesterday, and she was talking about her son Evan. 
Now, Evan broke up with his girlfriend, and so he was so sad, he wrote a song to Selena Gomez, a whole, and he did a whole music video. But Selena has not responded to the video. Take a look. So what did Selena say when she saw it? Well, he, he had this come out in January, and we haven't heard a thing. You haven't heard from Selena? Every day, he wakes up and he checks his DMs. Oh. Selena, you know you can hear us right now, girl. <laughs> now, my baby Evan, Jenny's son Evan, has made a video for you, Selena. <laughs> come on. Right? Can you do it for the McCarthy Wahlbergs? <laughs> So I just want to say, if any of y'all know Selena Gomez, if y'all know her, can you please tell us, Selena, please answer Evan's video. You don't know what it is when a young boy's heart is broken and he, you are his crush. And as your song says, Selena, the heart wants what it wants. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Now, y'all, one of my shows, one of my favorite shows is back, Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. It is back. Oh, when I tell you. I love Dancing with the Stars. The show got off to a great start. So when I watched it, this was the first night. I felt so nervous for everybody because I know how scary it is on the first night when you do Dancing with the Stars because I competed. That was my partner, Val Shmerkovsky, and we competed. And that first night is like, thank you. Oh, my goodness. You are on there and you, everybody becomes family on Dancing with the Stars because you've been, before the show even airs, you've been on there for about six weeks rehearsing, three weeks or uh, so rehearsing. And uh, the, here's the thing, nobody wants to be the first one to go home. That is the worst when you, you've worked so hard and they, you are the first one sent home. And before I started our first dance, I rehearsed weeks before the first night. Val Shmerkovsky and I, we did the Foxtrot, okay? And now, when I tell you, seven to eight hours every day, you are rehearsing. So the only time you're not rehearsing that much is when you're young. When they, those young kids that get on there, they young, they got that energy. Gladys Knight, who was one of my uh, p colleagues on Dance With The Stars, we were there every day rehearsing, rehearsing, rehearsing. Now this little young one that was on the show with me, Rashawn Fagan, he was a Disney kid. That boy came in. When I tell you, that little boy came in and knew everything. I said, how you know your routine? You only been here for an hour. <laughs> young kid, they know it, they get it, they got the energy. So. Here it is, it's tricky working with the rest of the cast because you're trying to figure out who your, your, your alliances are gonna be, who's gonna be with you, but then at the same time, you like, I want you to get kicked off. <laughs> you don't wanna say it, but it's like, it's only one award, you wanna get that award. You can be, you, you know, on the outside, you like, oh, good deal, good job. Inside, you ruthless. <laughs> I love Gladys Knight, but I was like, get on the midnight train to Georgia, you gotta go. <laughs> You gotta go. <laughs> but God don't like ugly, cause I went before. <laughs> <laughs> and when I left and when they voted me off, <laughs> I just knew Gladys Knight was going, uh-huh. <laughs> But Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I had such a great time on Dance with the Stars. Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Mauricio Ominski was in the bottom two last night. And so everybody was shocked, you know, because his wife Kyle Richards was in the audience. They, she's there, I think, going through a divorce, so she was in the audience. But, you know, it doesn't matter that Kyle Richards was in the audience. She wasn't the one doing the tango or whatever they were doing. So even though you have famous people in the audience, Kim Kardashian was on there and everybody was a Chloe Cole. Courtney, Khadijah, everybody <laughs> was in the audience and she still got voted off. So he, but it's a good thing for him because he sells real estate. So he was on the show. Now he can use that to sell more houses in Beverly Hills, I think. <laughs> I don't know. But Britney Spears' sister, Jamie Lynn Spears, she was really good as well. And Derek Huff, who's a judge, told her that she's better than she thinks she is. And she said to him that she's trying to quiet the voices in her head that makes her always doubt herself. And that's the problem, you get these voices. You always get voices in your head going, you can't do this. Who do you think you are? You don't deserve it. And that's the thing, you gotta try. I, that's, I didn't quiet my voices. That's probably why I got voted out third. <laughs> Them voices will get you, oh my goodness. So, and here's the thing about Dancing with the Stars. If you are an actress or an athlete, you do very well because athletes are laser focused. They are able to drown out everything. So they're very good. Athletes win a lot on Dancing with the Stars. Actors are good because we become a character. You act as if you know you got self-worth. You act. <laughs>
my acting was way off because I was just trying to get the steps. I'm sitting here trying to get the one, two, three, four, one. And then I'm looking at Val Shmerkovsky and I'm trying, but athletes and actors do well. So speaking of athletes who was on there, Adrian Peterson is on this season. So this is what Adrian did. He lifted his partner, Britt Stewart, up in the air three times. Now he is not a professional dancer. So would I trust Adrian to pick me up? Yes. Hell no. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? <laughs> See, what you looking at is he fine. That's what you looking up. <laughs> Let me tell you something about being fine. Fine ain't gonna keep you up in the air when you fall. <laughs> <laughs> like, my mother, fine, ain't gonna pay the rent. That's what my mother used to say. Uh-uh, no, sir. He not a professional dancer. Let me tell you something. You gotta trust your partner when they are throwing you. When Val and I did, we did the jive. And Val was supposed to pick me up. He looked at me, he said, we're not gonna do that move right there. <laughs> We did the job, so he said, well, let me see if I can spin you in a circle. His brother, Maxim Shmerkovsky, said, well, spin Sherry in the circle. So I was supposed to be whipped around. Val, he did have that. He was like, oh, shoot, this girl. <laughs> so we didn't even do the spin in the circle. I would not trust uh, somebody I don't know who's not professional to do it. And they wanted me on Dance with the Stars. I remember Val Shmerkovsky said to me, he wanted me to do the split. And I said, I cannot do the split. And he said, Sherry, all you have to do is close your eyes concentrate and allow your legs to gently fall away from you. <laughs> and I told Val, that's exactly how I got Jeffrey. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so are you kidding me? No, sir. No, sir. <laughs> that's the same thing Jeffrey Daddy told me to do. <laughs> But I had a lot of fun doing Dancing with the Stars. I am going to have fun watching it this season. I can't wait for next week to air. But I'll tell you what I have fun. I have fun watching this. Chloe Bailey is revealing who her celebrity crush is. So Michael B. Jordan is her celebrity crush. And Chloe told the Dottie show she likes him, but she would never make the first move. Take a look. I'll say it. Michael B. Jordan. That's my celebrity crush. I've been said that in interviews, even but, like but, years ago. But have you told him? No. This is where we got to work on your shoot and your shot, Chloe. I don't shoot my shot. So how is he going to know? I don't know. I think you should right now DM Michael B. Jordan. No. You could be blocking your blessings, and I know you're big on blessings. I'm big on blessings, but I'm like, God will bring my blessings to me when they're supposed to be here. We've got us about Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> Wow, look at you blushing like he's in the room. That's crazy. Just from thinking about him. <laughs> That's crazy. No, no. <laughs> okay, first of all, I thought this was brilliant. I thought Chloe played this perfectly because she's like, I never told him. He know now. He know now. <laughs> But I loved it because she was, she was perfectly coy, but she was still putting it out there. Yeah. Did you see, <laughs> with, with that cute little new lip liner, you got a, <laughs> I loved it Chloe, because Chloe said, I'm shy, but I'm really not that shy. I loved it. And I, me, I would love to see Michael B. Jordan take Chloe Bailey out. Yeah. And I, I found out before that they had met. Now look, they had met before. Now this was them in 2020, and I think they make a great couple. I think that Michael B. Jordan would blend in very well with, with Chloe's family. Halle Bailey would make you a great sister-in-law, Michael. Look, I'm marrying everybody off already. <laughs> But Chloe has a lot of that, I'm a good girl and I'm a bad girl too. And I'm, I'm, for me, I'm glad that she put it out there. Because here's the thing, sometimes I think you gotta put it out there because men are, they're, they're shy as well. I be trying to shoot my shot with these celebrities, but they just laugh because I'm a comedian. So they go, oh Sherry, you so funny. And I'm like, I'm not funny. <laughs> You be trying so hard, but that's not, you know, they, they, don't, they don't want the funny girl because, and I'm like, there is nothing funny about meet me in my hotel room, it's number eight. <laughs> nothing funny. And then they go, oh, you just being funny. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, but I applaud Chloe for shooting her shot. I, but because I was raised in a time where it's like women were not supposed to take the first step. But I do believe, yes, God is gonna send you somebody, but if you're just sitting in your apartment, you're not doing nothing, who, who God gonna send you? Except <laughs> the doggone Avon salesman. I don't know who he gonna send you. 
So it's like, and you have to also remember, ladies, men are shy as well. They get intimidated as well. Women, we are direct. Sometimes, sometimes it's scary for men to walk up to a woman. I learned about men so much from Jeffrey. Sometimes he's scared to ask for a second plate of food because I'm so doggone. He just, you know, because I'm like, Jeffrey, what do you want? He's like, see, it's, it's, it's the tone. So. <laughs> You have to realize men sometimes, they just need a little bit of help. So I think, you know, if Chloe had gone up to him maybe a few years ago in 2020, it might have been a little bit differently. And I think, you know, she could have been Chloe B. Jordan if she had done it in 2020. <laughs> I, I, just, I just picture these two together. So I encourage all women, yep, flirt and take a chance. Just take a chance. <laughs> but I'm gonna say this. When I'm telling women to flirt and take a chance and have fun, I probably need to take my own advice and be like Chloe. So I'm gonna shoot my shot right now. All right. Are you listening, Trevor Noah? Are you listening, Brad Pitt? Are you listening, Jason Momoa? Are you listening, Daniel Day Kim? Are you listening, Antonio Banderas? Are you listening, Hugh Jackman? Can you hear? Norman Baker put that picture, and I know Norman did that to me. <laughs> Y'all, we got a great show for you today, and later on, Sam J is in my laugh lounge. But up next, comedian and viral sensation Country Wayne is here. <laughs> Some nice furniture. Oh, well, we are happy to have you here. We've been so excited for you to come back. Uh, I just have to say, your laugh lounge, giving you your flowers, was the most watched ever. You got 10 million views. Appreciate it, man. Oh, man. Ten, wow. 10 wow. million views. Wow. Like, are you feeling the love from the Sherry Show family? Yeah, I feel like this home, man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah I, feel, I feel the love. I heard the music, I feel the people. This feel like, yeah, this feel like my, my auntie and my cousin house. Like, we about to play spades. Yes, we are spades playing people over here. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, I've been following you for so long, Wayne, and I, I've been following your videos. You have mastered the art of going viral. Your videos get two billion views last year. Yeah. They got it. I just have to tell you because a lot of people do this and they're not able to do this. How have you conquered this? Well, you know, I watched people when I first started, um, when Vine first came, but then I just used what I knew in high school and all that. I knew how to get attention. I knew how to, you know, uh, do what I want, do what I had to do to get what I wanted. So I just use it. I feel like the internet is a big high school to me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And you just started doing it, and it just started get hitting. Yeah, I started like September 2014. I went viral October 2014, and I had a couple million followers by that January. It was wow. Yeah, I know. I've always loved your viral videos when you would come out and you would dance. You'd have no shirt on. You would kick. Oh yeah. You dance with your head when you read children's books. Like I just, there's something about you. I just, we love watching your your videos. Yeah. You make a smile. Yeah. I, just relatable stuff. One of the first videos went viral when I did a video. We had to fake like like a girlfriend's cooking. <laughs> so I guess it was a lot of men out here faking because <laughs> that video touched everybody. It made every, you know, and it's so funny because celebrities watch your videos mm -hmm. and they want to get in it. You had T.I. Yeah. in one of your videos. You had, you had Lisa Ray McCoy. Yeah. And Le Let me tell you something about Lisa Ray. She real picky about what she does. Oh, yeah. But she was in a, in a video collaborating with you. Mm -hmm. But you said, I heard that you said one of your dream collaborations would be with Julia Roberts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. what, okay. Yeah. Now, you, uh, you got an Ocean's Eleven, a, a Pretty Woman, an Aaron Brockovich. What would you be doing with Julia? Oh, Julia, you know, uh, Pretty Woman was like my mama's favorite movie. 
And I used to watch that all the time as a little boy. And ever since I seen her with that red hair and no strawberries, I just wanted to. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I'm older now, you know? So, okay, yeah. you ready? Yeah, I went you straight ready? to Rodeo Drive when I first went to Hollywood. <laughs> Looking for Julia. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now, comedy comes from your family. I yeah. see you talk about your family all the time. This is what I can't believe. You have 10 children with yeah. five women. Yeah, I couldn't believe it either. Oh, my God. Yeah. You, okay, look at all of these. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, one of them. One of them was still in me. One of them is still in you. One of them was in that picture, yeah. <laughs> You've got to tell me this. OK, one is still in you. I'm cracking up. Mm -hmm. You got 10 kids, yeah. five different women. Do they live all over the, across the country? Oh, no, or... they, um, they all stay, they all, most of them stay close by. Um, uh, they all stay close by, most of them, uh, like five, 10 minutes away. They got keys to my house. They walk in when they want to, the baby mamas. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I sometimes I don't even know which one of them there. I just hear a voice. <laughs> I get a text. And I don't even know who upstairs. Only thing it's doing is it's hurting my life, because it's beautiful. It's a beautiful situation, but yeah. I, I accidentally go celibate sometimes, because <laughs> no, no girl want to come there. My baby mama's just laying on the sofa. That's what I'm like. And I want to know with 10 kids, mm -hmm. I can, because I call my, I, I, I remember when my mother used to call me by my sisters and brothers' names. So, how, do you know all of the kids' their names? Can you give me all their names? Yeah, and Tony Tamar, Leah, I mean, Tony Tamar, Leah, Christiana, Zaria, uh, Kiyomi, Unis, Melissa, uh, uh, <laughs> Taylor. <laughs> Taylor? Taylor? Now, somebody's missing. <laughs> I just, I just miss somebody's name, but baby, I love you if you watch TV. <laughs> Every interview. Yeah. That's pretty much Christiana. 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 Okay, but let me get you here. Do you know the birthdays? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, look. Tony, uh, August, August the 2nd. Uh-huh. Tamar next, December the 31st. Um, Alea, March the 3rd. Malia, March the 16th. Uh, uh, no, March 27th. Uh, Melissa, December 31st. I mean, December 30th. Um, you already tired. On January 6th. <laughs> Kiyomi, January 16th. I just... You tired, I understand. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Share it. Good, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Oh, when my birthday? Cause I'm just trying, I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm not even gonna put you through that. You are a great father. I will yeah, say that, yeah. definitely. You yeah, are a great yeah, father. Yeah. But I, not only being great, I'm so very, very happy for you because I want to congratulate you on your first hour comedy special yeah. for a comedian. Yeah. That is a big deal, having your first special. How does it feel? Man, it feels good. You know, I finally feel, you know, as a comedian coming from the internet, that was the thing. Can, yes. can internet comics do stand up like the great Bernie Mac and Richard Pryor and all those people? So, it was one of the milestones that I really want, want to show the world. So, I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad, you know, they're loving it. Hey, man, you know, that was one of the milestones. Now I feel like I'm one of the comedians now. You know? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but I respect you. As a stand-up, you're putting in the work. You are definitely putting in the work. But this is what trips me out. You don't curse in your stand-up. No, no, I don't curse because you know I want to. I got a lot of kids and all, <laughs> so I got I got to do something right. So okay. I ain't want every, I wanted everybody to watch my stuff. I wanted the grandkids and the and the grandmas and the mamas and the children. I wanted to be um, like that, but. But, it's a but. It's a but. At the same time, I found out Jerry Seinfeld is the richest comedian ever, and he don't curse. So I was like, I want that billion. So. <laughs> I, want, I want some of that other money. I'm telling you, it's actually better when you don't curse because more people will come to see yeah, you. Yeah, more people. I got, I got both crowds. I got the hood and the church. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Because when I said I'm a... When... Amen. Look at that, boy. They get amen. <laughs> Black people ready to say amen, bro. <laughs> we gonna say it later on. We gonna, it's, we finna say it in a minute. You know what I love is you are just having a great year because you also wrote a, a bestseller. You wrote a self-help mm -hmm. biography. Yes. Okay. You got your, you got your Netflix special. Like, have you splurged on anything? Yeah, I, I splurged more than child's boy. Child's boy. <laughs> 
<laughs> they're called splurge because that's every month. Yo, Kate, you splurge on child support? How much is your child support? Oh, my goodness. Can I ask you that? Yeah, my child support, I, my family, my, just my family costs me uh, about 200 a month. That's $200? 200,000. 200,000? It don't have to cost me that much. It just child support come with baby mama support. Everybody come behind the children with their hands out. Yeah. So I, oh my goodness! I splurged on some, I splurged some things, cars and all that. I got a million dollars worth of cars, but it ain't nothing like that child support with people with feet walk up on you. Yeah. <laughs> a million dollars worth of cars. You ever let people borrow your cars, or you just drive them off? My baby mama had my car while I was gone. Really? She got. She went to my house. She got the keys. She, my my daughter trying to take that car from me. She <laughs> she told my my mama wanted bad. Like so, she, man. Everybody drive the car except for the pink one. They don't drive the pink one. Oh my gosh, yeah. that is like uh, absolutely amazing. Yeah. I'm... It's so funny because you are so and and you work hard for. It. You have a lot of money because you are very very <laughs> shit, successful. Shit, shit. Hey 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 hey. <laughs> yeah, we on TV. Child support. Listen, are you the child support lady? <laughs> Why you, why you, why you Look, let me that? tell you something. Cause are, are you single right now? Yes, I'm single. I'm single. Okay. I'm definitely single. Yeah. You the type. Look, I'm the type of woman you want to get with. Cause yeah. I ain't got no uterus. I, I thought... You want to get with me? Yeah. I'm not gonna have no baby. Yeah. And I'm the one. And, and guess what? <laughs> I, I don't care if you got a history read to me. I still have a baby. I don't Amen. care. Amen. Amen. No. Uh, uh I, I create eggs. So <laughs> I make some. I make some more. I'm telling you. You know what? I, I, I man, 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 you do make a good couple, though. I thought about that. We, we already successful. We already. See, this a date. What date you gonna get better than this right here? I don't know because I got my own stuff. Cause I could buy you three or four more cars. You could buy me three or four more cars. You get me three or four more cars. Like I'm at your level. I'm at your level. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Sure, We're at the don't... same level. Yeah. Sure. Oh my gosh. You is looking so beautiful. <laughs> it's your eyes. It's your glow. You're an angel. So I gotta come at you from a whole different angle. Wayne, you better stop with your bad self. You're a wife. Okay, all right. When you come back, we will talk about yeah, it. Hallelujah. About it. Hallelujah. Amen. Country Wayne, thank you so much thank for being sure. here. We love you. Y'all check out A Woman's Prayer. It's streaming on Netflix right now, and we will be right back. Country Wayne. So here to break that down and everything else in entertainment is Variety's chief correspondent, Elizabeth Wagmeister. Elizabeth! Hi, Terry. I'm so glad you're here. I am so happy to be here. Okay, so this, I, I wanna watch this. Mm -hmm. You were the only reporter that was allowed at that mansion. So what can you reveal about the show? Yes, so they have not had a reporter there for nearly a decade for night one when they arrived really? in the limos. I was there, I was backstage, I was in the control room. I saw these fierce and fabulous women coming out of the limos, meeting Gary, who's the 72-year-old Golden Bachelor. Wow. What I will tell you, age ain't nothing but a number, because these women were up past 6 a.m. filming. It was Shooting. An, an all-night shoot. They went okay. for over 11 hours. That would have knocked me out, because I got to be in bed by 9. I'd have been the first one um, in the row. Sherry, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Yeah. I left at about 2.30 a.m. They all outlasted me, OK? Wow. <laughs> they were up ahead. all night, and I can't wait to watch it. I, this is exciting. Now, OK, does this version, and he is very good looking, 72 years old. <laughs> Damn, I should have had him on my list, shoot your shot. OK, so does this version of The Bachelor, you know, they have a fantasy suite in the other ones. Does this have a fantasy suite? Oh, yes. They, okay. they do. So I interviewed one of the top executives who oversees The Bachelor for ABC. Yes. And of course I had to ask. I said, the people want to know, are there yeah. fantasy suites? And he said, not only are there fantasy suites, all of America is going to be talking. Um, <gasps> what? I know. Okay. How's that for a tease? All right, well, you know, I'm liking this. So I think, is there, you think there would be a bachelorette for women over 60? Well, I asked that too. You know, I okay. always ask all the questions. What they say? No plans at this moment, but I'm just gonna put it out there. I think we are going to see a golden bachelorette because this show and franchise keeps going and going and going and going. And it had to be standouts when you were watching in the control booth. These women, they're really incredible. They're so fun. I hear that there's drama, but not the drama between the women. I hear they're very supportive of each other. Right. So I just love this idea, and I think we will see a golden bachelorette. Okay, I'm waiting for that. I would yeah. love to see that.
In fact, you be, don't forget us. Don't forget us. I think you could be. The you star. know, I, I don't know. I don't know how I'd be in a in a batch as a bachelorette. I, it'd be something I'd, I'd be love watching. to try. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I'd um, be watching. So we got another trending story, and mm -hmm. this is I'm so happy. It is the end of the writer strike. So what is the latest? Like, yes. are we gonna see our shows coming back on the air? We will, but not so soon, because the actors are still on strike. But That's here's right. the good news, Sherry, is they are actually going back to the negotiating table on Monday. So right after this the weekend, actors. the actors. Yes. So of course, the writers are back, so they can now start writing, but you need the actors to get the shows yes. back. But since the writer strike is now over, we're gonna see late night shows returning next week. So this Sunday and Monday, okay. all of the late night shows, Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, John Oliver, we'll see them all back They're on all TV. They're all coming back. And it's been a while. I am so glad. Now there's one show that I was watching because it was a strike and this was the one that came on all the time was Suits. And Suits had Gabriel, uh, Gabriel Mock, yep. uh, Patrick J. Adams, and Meghan Markle. I've all heard right. of her. Is streaming. I like Meghan Markle too. Mm -hmm. So they got all of these billions of streams. Yes. Does, could that possibly be a reboot? Could Meghan Markle come back? So this, we have to get into the numbers first, Sherry, because okay. this really became a wild hit, okay? Yeah. This show ended a long time ago, but then it was on Netflix and Peacock, and you're right, because of the strike, people didn't have their show, so they were mm -hmm. looking to discover new shows. Three billion streams per week wow. on Suits, okay? It became the top show on streaming. It's still the top show on streaming. And your questions are the obvious ones. Are we going to see a reboot or a spin-off? Yeah. Fans want it, okay? Yes. The creator of the show has been tweeting. Patrick J. Adams, who's one of the stars, was posting some photos on Instagram. Ah. I've checked in with sources. No reboot in the work right now, so I'm told, but I have some good news Megan, for you. Megan, come on, I wanna see Megan. Okay, yeah. so here's some good news, and this is a okay. scoop for you, okay, okay Sherry? Okay, well, give it to me. So I reached out to my Megan Markle sources, I didn't talk to her, but some people who, who know some things, okay? Yes. Now, when she was on the cover of Variety last year, we asked her if she'll ever be back to acting. She said, no, I'm done, but never say never. Okay. Well, now I'm hearing, never say never, and if there was a spinoff, it could be fun for her to do a little cameo. Oh, That's so what I'm she hearing. She might come back in a cameo, Megan Markle. You know, don't count on a spinoff around her, but I'm hearing that a cameo is not off the table. So let me tell you something. If Megan Markle comes on for a cameo, hmm? who you think might play that boyfriend? Prince Harry. Ooh. We are see, we are starting all sorts of rumors here. I'm telling I love you. It. Make that We're whole family out, work. Putting it out in the universe. Putting it out in the universe. <laughs> Elizabeth, I am so excited you came. Thank you so much for Thank being you, here. Keep it right here. <laughs> Our next guest is one of my favorite comics right now. She has a new comedy special called Salute Me or Shoot Me on Max. Please welcome to my Laugh Lounge, comedian Sam J. Hey, what's okay. up? So not only, Sam J, congratulations on your new special. Thank you. And your engagement. Yes. You're engaged. How's it going with your fiance? So this, you got a fiance now. I do. I got a fiance, new responsibilities. It's going good. It's hard, though. I didn't realize how much work was involved in an engagement. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Just how much work it is to be with someone. It's like you got to care every day. <laughs> Every single day. And it's like, I don't do anything every day. I don't even brush my teeth every day. <laughs> but I'm supposed to wake up and care about this lady, but you know, I'm doing it. Uh, did you doing it? And <laughs> yeah. you're doing it well now. I mean, living together, y'all, okay, are you, you living together, you, are, are you concerned about the, the breakdown of the household chores? Uh, yeah, I'm very concerned, because uh, I got to do all the nasty ones. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm on trash, you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know when I started dressing like a boy, I was going to get all the boy jobs. <laughs> I didn't think about that. I got two brothers. I didn't grow up taking out the trash, but now okay. I'm on trash duty. Okay. Oh my gosh. Should you be making you do all of that? All the trash. Okay, so you're doing all of the, the, the chores and everything. Do you think that your fiance is asking too much from you? Absolutely. And she's reckless with the trash because I'm doing it. I feel like because I'm on trash, <laughs> the trash is disgusting. Okay. Like the other day I went to take out the trash and it was a raw, loose, naked chicken breast on the top, on the very top. <laughs> Like, what am I supposed to do with that? And she told me to push it down, like, with my hands, baby. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Okay. Now, all right. So I, I'm listening to all this. Your home life seems hectic. Do you get to relax at all at the summertime? I had a great white lady summer. I really did. Okay, you did. <laughs> I did. I can't lie. What was 
I drank a lot of wine. I sat on a lot of boats. It was nice. It okay. was nice. I went to a lot of resorts. I peed in the resort pools. <laughs> That's my favorite pastime, peeing in resort pools. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's an agreement when you're at the resort to pee in the pool. Really? Because everybody's drinking, but nobody's getting out the pool. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where I'm like, OK, you and you and the adult being in the pool, but it's something when you get in that pool, Sam J, you just sit there and it happens. Yeah, it's you're drinking. Like a... You're like, oh, the toilet's far. OK. I just find you a little corner. And Let it, it is, loose. It's just you feel, like, ecstatic. It uh, just, it just... <laughs> such a relief. <laughs> I love having full conversations and peeing at the same time. Like, okay. yeah, that's great. Where are you from? OK, so wait a minute. So now you're doing all this. You had your white lady summer. You, you got your, you're taking out trash. Are you even busy when you're planning the wedding? I mean, not really. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm kind of leaving it up to her. I mean, some days she wakes up and she's like, let's just go to the courthouse. Some days yeah. she's like, I want a big wedding on Martha's Vineyard. I'm hoping whatever it is is cheap. OK. <laughs> Cause you didn't spend a bunch of your money over the summertime. Peeing in pools. Okay. <laughs> all right, so you have no time to watch TV at all. I mean, here and there, I'm a big documentary person. You know what I mean? Yeah. When uh -huh. I do get the time, I watch a lot of documentaries about yeah. how white people ruin the world. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's the gist of pretty much every documentary. Uh -huh, uh -huh. All of them. The ones about race, the ones about animals, they all come back to white people doing something bad. <laughs> So what's the one about the animals? I was watching this one about like walruses. Like there's like all these wolves in the Arctic and they like basically are kind of like suicidal because we're running out of ice and all that stuff. So they climb to the top of these peaks but they can't get down. Right. And so they get depressed and then they throw themselves off. And I was watching this for about 30 minutes and then I was like, mm -hmm, I don't care. <laughs> and not because I'm evil, I just don't have room for like suicidal walruses in my life and right like, now. It's just so much. It's just a lot going on. It's a lot going on. You taking out trash and it's and the walruses throwing. Exactly. <laughs> Sam J, y'all give it up for Sam J. Hey. I... When I tell you I admire you on a whole nother level, Sam J, all your success. Oh, thank I just you. want to congratulate you on it. And y'all make sure you check out Sam J's new comedy special, Salute Me or Shoot Me. It is on Max right now, and we will be right back. Sam J! It's time for Tell Me Something Good, and I am here with Victor and his wife, Loretta, from New York. So, Victor, uh, tell me something good. Well, I've been working since I was 14 years old, yeah. and um, my wife brought me to the Sherry Show to celebrate my years of retirement. Oh, my goodness! Oh! Congratulations on your retirement, Victor. You. And to celebrate, we're going to send you and your wife to dinner with a $100 cash gift card. Yeah. We will be right back. whether you want it or not. And before the show, I asked our Sherry family their opinion on some topics, and it's time to see what the majority thinks. So let's play Family Says. I am here with Addie from New York. All right, hey, Addie. Hi. OK, so Addie, you have to get two out of three of the questions right to win a prize, OK? So here is the first question. On Dancing with the Stars, Kyle Richards supported her ex, Mauricio. What would it take for you to support your ex if they needed it? Would it be, A, a whole lot of money, B, nothing, I will support them no matter what, or C, absolutely nothing would get me to support them? I, it has to be B. It has to be B, nothing. I will support them no matter what. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. is that what the correct answer? Let's see if you're right. Family says yes. Yeah. 55%. <laughs> Who the heck? What? <laughs> no, no. Okay, y'all must have thought it said next and not oh. X. I will support the <laughs> X no matter what. Okay, next question. I'm still surprised at y'all. All right. <laughs> Chloe Bailey talked about her celebrity crush. If you had the opportunity to meet your celebrity crush, what would you do, Addie? A, shoot your shot. B, run away and hide. C, awkwardly stare in silence. Oh, it has to be A, shoot your shot. Shoot your shot, and All right, let's see if you're right. Family says. Yes, you are right. That's right. Life is short. Shoot the shot. OK, so next question, Addie. I know a lot of us have kids, so when you see other people's kids acting out in public, deep down, do you want to, A, tell them off, B, mind your own business, or C, trip them and see what happens? 
It might be a little mean, but I, I think everyone agrees with C. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think. Addie, let's see if you're right. Family says... C! C! I think we all would want to trip them. So, Addie, you want a $250 gift card to Tally and Twine for a destination for unique and luxury time pieces, and we'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. Tomorrow, Shanice and Tracy Spencer will be here. So come join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye. Yeah.